So in this video, we'll we'll try to implement the bubble sort algorithm. We have already seen some examples of bubble sort algorithm in the preliminary course. So here we'll try to implement the bubble sort function uh, for in the C programming language. Okay. So what is a bubble sort function? Assuming that we have an array like this, and we want to sort all the elements which are present inside this array, and assuming the type of sorting which we want to do is it will be the non decreasing order okay for example if you have the elements which are 5 0 1 7 and we have uh, 3 and 2 assuming that these are the elements which are present inside this array now as i told you in the bubble sort algorithm that in case of bubble sort we perform two types of operation number one we are going to perform some passes and number two we are going to perform some iterations so there are two things number one is passes and second one is the iterations so we'll be doing passes and iterations in if, if for for example if there are total n items in this then we are going to do total n minus one passes and at the same time we are also going to do total n minus one iterations and later on we proposed one more algorithm which was the improved bubble sort algorithm so the main purpose of this program is not just to implement the bubble sort algorithm but rather implement the bubble sort algorithm and implement the improved bubble sort algorithm and compare these algorithms on the basis of the time complexity for these functions and here the time complexity that we will be taking will be the actual uh, running time of these algorithms rather than just the time complexity of uh, discussing the number of statements which are being executed we are going to discuss the time complexity on the basis of actual running time of these algorithms and we are going to take an array which is having large number of elements for example, we'll be taking an array which will be having thousand elements. Okay, so let us assume. Let us see how the bubble sort algorithm can be implemented. So initially, we are going to compare these two elements, which are zero and five. If zero is less than five, so we are going to swap it. Zero will come here, and five will come here. After this, the elements that will be having is zero, five, one, seven, three, and two. Now, in these elements, then we are going to compare the limits which are 5 and 1 now 1 will come here and 5 will come here later on again uh, after this operation the elements that will be having is 0 1 5 7 3 and 2 now here again we are going to compare 5 and 7 now you can see 7 is greater than 5 therefore there is no need to swap the elements after this the element that will be having is 0 1 5 7 3 and 2 and we are going to compare 7 and 3 so because 3 is less than 7 so 3 will come here and 7 will come here again the elements will be 0 1 5 3 7 and 2 again we are going to compare the element which are 7 and 2 because 7 is less than 2 so 7 uh, because 2 is less than 7 therefore 2 will come here and 7 will come here now you can see this is this entire is a first pass after the end of the first pass the biggest data is at its correct position now you can see if the biggest data is at its correct position therefore if there are total n items so we have to perform total n minus 1 passes so that all the n minus 1 data will be at its correct position so obviously the nth data will come at its correct position and in this complete pass these are the iterations this is iteration number 1 this is iteration number 2 this is iteration number 3 this is iteration number 4 iteration number 5 because there are 6 elements so we have 5 iteration in this pass so this is the bubble sort algorithm we already discussed this algorithm before uh, in the preliminary course so I'm just going to implement this bubble sort program here and uh, then we'll implement the bubble sort program we'll try to analyze what is the actual running time of this bubble sort program okay so for, for this purposes uh, we'll be having we him taking two loops so for that we will be having integer i j and we are going to take an extra variable which is the temporary variable now we will be doing for i is equal to 1 i less than n and we will be having i plus plus now here you can see n is the total number of elements and a is the array then we will be having next for loop which is for j is equal to uh, we can take j from 0 so j is equal to 0 j less than n minus 1 and we'll be having j plus plus now you can see the i loop will run n minus 1 times at the same time the j loop will also run n minus 1 times 
now we'll be putting a condition here that if the element if the element which is present in a of j minus 1 a of j is greater than the element a of j plus 1 then we'll swap these elements for swapping we can use a temporary variable so we can do temp is equal to a of j and then a of j is equal to a of j plus 1 and then a of j plus 1 is equal to m okay and by this we can perform the bubble sort function this is a very simple function we have already seen the example nothing can be simpler than this so first of all let us test out this function and we'll see how if this function is working correctly or not now if this function is working correctly then we implement this function in a bigger array maybe an array which is having 1000 element or maybe an array which is having 10000 elements and then we'll try to see what is the actual running time of this function okay for actual running time we are going to use the header file which is hash include time.h I will take that one by one, so don't worry. So let us first of all try to implement this bubble sort function on a simple array. Okay, so we'll be taking an array, uh, integer, assuming the name of the array is ARR, and let us assume we are having 10 elements only, and uh, these elements are in decreasing order 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we'll be having an element which is 0. These are total 10 elements. Now we are going to call the bubble sort function bubble sort on this array and there are total 10 elements and after this we can just print out all the elements which are present in this array because bubble sort is going to sort these elements so I'm going to take an extra variable integer i now for i is equal to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus I'm just going to print these values that is printf will be having arr percentage d comma arr of i and we have done this work just to see that whether this array is sorted or not so let us go to build and we are going to run the program build and run now you can see the array is now sorted array is having the elements which are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 and this is a very simple proof that this function is working perfectly there is no issues whatsoever now what if there are some elements which are repeating for example here we are having 9 and here we are having uh, one more element which is 0 if the elements are repeating is it fun working perfectly let us see so see if even if the elements are repeating this function is working perfectly and uh, it is giving the data in sorted format that's okay because it is very simple right now what we are going to do is we'll take an array which is having thousand elements we'll be having thousand elements in that array and we'll try to measure the actual running time of this bubble sort function okay so we are going to take integer arr which is having thousand elements and we are going to put elements into this array in decreasing order so for we'll take one more variable integer i for i is equal to zero and i less than one thousand and we'll be having i plus plus and then we are going to put arr of i is equal to thousand minus i okay so this is putting the elements in reverse order for example the zeroth index location we are going to put thousand value in the first index location we are going to put value which is 999 in the second index location we are going to put the value which is 998 and so on and now to measure the time, we'll be using the header file which is hash include time dot h. So hash include time dot h. Now this time dot h header file gives us the facility to include some functions which are related to the time. For example, we can find out what is the current time and what will be the time after execution of the function. So that is just we are just going to store the clock and we'll measure the time. We'll find out what is the difference between the two clocks. Uh, before executing the function after executing the function for that purposes we are going to take a variable here which is a that is we are going to take lock underscore t so for this we are going to take two variables of clock underscore t type that is start and end thus this start variable will st uh, take the uh, value in the beginning that is what was the value of the clock before starting the function and this end variable will take the value is what is the value after ending the function so I'm going to take start is equal to clock so 
so that is what is the exact time before starting the function bubble sort and and again is equal to clock that is what is the exact time when you are ending the function and then we will measure the difference between the start and end right for example right now if it is 4 uh, 4 or 10 pm and before starting the function if it is 4 or 5 pm then the difference is 5 minutes so we are just going to measure the difference and we are going to store the difference in a double variable so I am going to take double CPU time used this is a variable which will tell what the CPU time used to execute this function and uh, which will be uh, giving will be using double and minus start okay and this value will be stored but we have not converted this value in a millisecond format so I can convert this value in millisecond format but before that we are just going to see what is the value of this one so I'm going to use the printf function printf will be having percentage lf that is long float and then we are going to use uh, cpu time used and we'll try to print this value so I'm just going to build and I'm going to run now you can see this giving the time which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. it is not giving an exact time Why? we are going to convert this value for clock that is in seconds so you can say it, we are going to divide by clocks per second and let us see what will be the value after this one so I am going to do build and run so still it is taking a value ok so why it is taking this much value because we have not uh, we have not changed this value we are just sorting first 10 elements rather than sorting first element 10 elements we have to sort the thousand elements so this is the reason why it is giving a time which is zero now because to sort 10 elements it is going to take very small time which is negligible but to sort thousand elements it is going to take some time and we are going to measure that time so i'll go to build and i'm going to build and run now you can clearly see it is giving me some time and this time is 0 0.003 seconds remember it is in seconds so we are getting the time in terms of second we have to convert this time in terms of milliseconds okay so what i can do is i can multiply it with thousand thousand and i'm going to, I'm going to say this much milliseconds this much milliseconds it will take so i'm just going to build and i'm going to run now you can see it is saying that uh, we are going to take three milliseconds to sort 1000 elements if you are going to use the bubble sort algorithm okay now you can see it is very simple to measure the starting time and ending time of the function okay but still it is uh, it is just an approximation time because this time will change from system to system for example if you are going to use some other cpu which is uh, which is you know uh, if that cpu is slower than this one then maybe it will take uh, uh, more time to sort these data items or maybe if that cpu is faster than my current cpu then maybe the function is going to take uh, less time to execute so this code will be available with you in a file so when you execute on your system you can measure a measure what is the exact time this function is going to take to sort 1000 elements okay now what we are going to do is the main purpose for this video is to uh, write the bubble sort function as well as the improved bubble sort function and to measure what will be the gain if we use the improved bubble sort function rather than the bubble sort function right because we we have suggested some improvements in the bubble sort function so uh, we propose an improved bubble sort function and so that we can reduce the time complexity and we'll see how can we reduce the time complexity with this function and later on we are going to compare this bubble or bubble sort function with other functions also like we have uh, the quick sort algorithm we have the merge sort algorithm we'll take those algorithms and we are going to compare the time complexity of those functions or you can say the actual running time taken by those functions with the bubble sort function okay so let us make an improved bubble sort function and this improved bubble sort function just we have just done small change in the bubble sort function so i'm just going to copy this bubble sort function here i'm going to do copy and paste to implement the improved bubble sort okay so for this purposes i have copied this one and the bubble sort i'm just going to write improved bubble sort function and in this improved bubble sort function we proposed two changes number one to include the flag variable and second one to reduce the number of iterations uh, when we reduce uh, no, uh, when, when you actually uh, 
uh, sort the data. That for example, the first pass you have to sort n items, in the say next part you have to sort n minus one item, in the next pass you have to sort n minus two items, and so on. That we already discussed. So I'm just going to take a flag variable integer flag is equal to zero or flag is equal to one. There's a flag variable, and here I'm going to use and flag. And as soon as we enter this loop, I'm going to make flag is equal to zero. And again, I'm going to make flag is equal to one inside this loop. So I'm going to make flag is equal to one. Okay. If there's a swap, then only we'll make flag is equal to one. Otherwise, no. Okay. And secondly, the second operation that we needed to perform is to reduce the number of iterations in the pass. So for that purpose, I'm going to write j is less than n minus. Right, so that will reduce the number of iterations in the pass. Now this is the function which is the improved bubble sort function. So we'll write, uh, we'll copy the similar kind of same program, and but we are going to implement the, this with the improved bubble sort function. So this is, uh, I'm just going to make a small small changes here. So the here printf statement, this is in millisecond with the bubble sort function. This is the time taken with the bubble sort function, and then I'm also going to find what the time taken by the improved bubble sort function. Okay, so for that purposes, I have to initialize the array with the same values. So I'm going to just initialize the array with the same values with this code. And after this one, I have to uh, again I have to find the start clock and the end clock before starting the improved bubble sort function. So I'm just going to find what the start clock and end clock, and I'm just going to do improved bubble sort function. And then again, I, I'm going to find what the CPU time used after this improved bubble sort. So I'm just going to find what the CPU time used after this improved bubble sort, and then in the end I'm just going to print these values in terms of milliseconds. So this time used with the improved bubble sort function. Okay. Now I think you got it. What I've done. So this is the code that I've declared an array. Here I've declared uh, initialized the value in the decreasing order, and here. Uh, I've implemented the bubble sort function. Before implementing the bubble sort function, I am measuring what is the current time. After implementing the bubble sort function, I am measuring what is the current time. And by finding the difference of that time, I can find what is the time taken to implement the bubble sort. Okay, and I'm printing that value. Later on, again I initialize the same array with the same kind of values. And here, this time I'm implementing the improved bubble sort function. I implemented the start of the clock, end of the clock, found the difference, and then again. I'm uh, trying to print what is the time taken to implement the same sorting algorithm with the improved bubble sort. So let us build, and we are going to run the program. Now you can see here clearly uh, for the bubble sort function, it is going to take three milliseconds to execute, and for improved bubble sort function, it is going to take two milliseconds to execute. And it is very clear that uh, with the improved bubble sort function, we have done some changes we improved the time complexity for this function okay so obviously clear that uh, it, it isn't but this this entire thing will be more drastic if the data is already sorted okay now for example if the entire values inside the array is the same value now as you can see i've already discussed it with you let me write it again with the bubble sort function with the bubble sort if this is in the best case in the worst case and in average case in best case it was taking omega of n square time in the worst case it is taking order of n square time in the average case it was taking theta of n square time but when we proposed the improved bubble sort now in case of improved bubble sort in best case it was taking odd omega of n time. In worst case, it is taking order of n square time. But in average case, it is taking order of n square time. That means the best case of improved bubble sort is way better than the best case of the bubble sort algorithm. So if you want to see this change, that if the improved bubble sort is better than the bubble sort algorithm, then we have to analyze the best case of this. That means what is the best case time complexity or what is the time taken by this algorithm in the best case. So I'm just going to store all the values which are same here and here also I'm going to implement all the values which are same. So if you change all the values which are same or if the values which are stored in the array they are in increasing order or you can also store it in increasing order that is a of i is equal to i and here also I'm going to make a of i is equal to i. If all the values are solved in increasing order in this particular case 
the bubble sort algorithmic order of n square time but improved bubble sort algorithmic order of n time so the difference between sorting these two things will be more drastically uh, you know improved bubble sort will take more drastic or you can say a uh, better time as compared to the bubble sort algorithm so i'm just going to go to build and run now you can see uh, the bubble sort functions took 2 milliseconds to execute and the improved bubble sort function took 0.00, .00 milliseconds to execute okay so that is uh, done very good that is very quite easily done here and you can clearly see what is the difference between the bubble sort algorithm and the improved bubble sort algorithm so if you want to implement this code this uh, entire code will be available with you um, in the files for in the folder of this video okay and uh, you can execute the code on your machine and if you want to make the changes more drastic you can just try to increase the size of the array try to increase the values which are stored inside this array and then you can also implement uh, find out what is the time taken on your machine to implement this function okay now we'll do one thing we'll take all these algorithms one by one we'll take the selection sort we'll take merge sort we'll take quick sort and we'll try to see what is the time taken to sort these array with these different algorithms okay i hope this is clear so let us move on to the next algorithm and that next algorithm will be the selection sort and the merge sort algorithm and for that purposes i'm just going to consider the improved bubble sort algorithm i'm not going to consider the bubble sort algorithm okay so to compare with those algorithms fine 